Good morning, everyone. We'd like, I'd like to welcome you out to the eighth annual ETE conference that we're putting on this year. Um, the title of this conference is Pedagogies of Care and Community Research and Mentorship. Um, well, first, I would like to say, uh, and maybe as sad as this may be for some of you, but very happy for me, uh, that summer is now over and winter is on the way. We have a nice storm coming in here in Cache Valley. And so I look forward to uh, shorter days and a great, fantastic winter. But until that comes, we look forward to this fall semester be, with all of its unknown and ambiguities of being a very good one nonetheless. And we'd like to kick it off with this fantastic conference. So first, I would like to thank um, our ETE faculty committees that um, have worked very hard to put together this conference and many of the ETE um, events that we were will be providing for you throughout the year. Um, our previous year's committee members have, uh, have been volunteering for um, some uh, two years and, and a little bit more, and we'd like to express our gratitude and thank all of them for the time that they have provided to us. Um, we do have two new members. We have Karen DeJong Cannon. Um, she's from the World Languages and Cultures Department, and we welcome her to the committee. And Jeff Sheen from Social Work, um, who will be participating in the committee in this upcoming year. So with that, I'd like to turn the time over to uh, Marilyn Kutch, who will then be uh, sharing some more information with you. And, and as long as well as the rest of our committee members. So Marilyn. Thank you, John. Han, which is Lakota for good morning. My name is Marilyn Kutch and I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Teacher Education and Leadership in the Uinta Basin. I'm an enrolled member of the Hunkpapa Lakota people of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe of North and South Dakota. I'm also the chair of the Land Acknowledgement Committee appointed by President Cockett. Right now we're working on land acknowledgement statements for all of the centers and campuses across Utah, including Colorado, a website and a Canvas template that you can use in your courses and syllabi resources that will be on the President Gailey's website. So right now let's start off our meeting in the right way, thanking the creator for the rain, for the nourishment that our land needs, but also to acknowledge where we all sit on. We acknowledge that USU and all of the in-state USU institutions reside on the original territory of the eight federally recognized tribes of Utah. Tribes that have been living, working, and residing on this land from time immemorial. These tribes are the Confederated Tribes of the Goshute Indians, the Navajo Nation, the Northern Ute Tribe, the no Northwestern Band of Shoshone, Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah, the San Juan Southern Paiute, the Skull Valley Band of Goshute, and the White Mesa Band of the Ute Mountain Ute. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this land, and we honor and respect the indigenous peoples that still connect to the land on which we gather today. Palama Yayapi, Mitakwayaye Oyasin. I'll turn it over to you, Cree Taylor. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn. I appreciate you. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm so happy that you are here participating in this conference with us. My name is Bree Taylor, and I am a lecturer in the English department at the Utah State University Logan campus. Um, and I'm also the chair of the ETE conference subcommittee. So that's why I get to talk to you all right now. I want to thank um, Travis Thurston, Shelly Arnold, Sam Clem, all the staff at the Office of Empowering Teaching Ex Excellence and the staff at the Center for Innovative Design and Instruction here at USU for all of the work um, that they have put into making this what will prove to be a wonderful conference. They do so much work. Um, I also want to thank the ETE conference subcommittee members for their work and input, the session moderators for their time, and of course our presenters for submitting proposals and preparing what I'm sure will be a stellar, will be stellar presentations that will help us all as we continue to develop ourselves as teachers. And 
I'm going to finish thanking people in a second, but I also want to extend a huge Aggie welcome to our keynote speakers, Kelly Hogan and VG Safi um, of the University of North Carolina. I'm, I'm super excited to hear from them today. Um, as was previously mentioned, this year's theme is Pedagogies of Care, Community, Research, and Mentorship. The theme for this conference was inspired by a learning circle that I participated in with some colleagues here at USU. In this learning circle, we focus on the open educational resource from the authors in the West Virginia University Press teaching and learning series called Pedagogies of Care. I'll drop the link to that resource for everybody in the chat so that you can have it. Let me grab it real quick and then I'll get back to my little spiel. That's it. Um, so there's a resource for, for you, um, for those of you that are interested in viewing it. Um, there is a session that talks about learning circles that will be led by Mike Bakula um, that will occur in the conference today. So if you'd like more information on learning circles um, and how they work, you can jump into that session. But anyway, uh, this learning circle on pedagogies of care took place during the fall 2020 semester, the semester that must not be named, uh, where we were all trying our best to teach students via Zoom or online in circumstances that were very draining on student and instructor mental and physical health. In this learning circle, our discussions focused on how we could be more caring as teachers to our students through our classroom content, our readings and activities, and through our course assignments and syllabi. We also focused on how we could show more care to ourselves as instructors. Um, Marilyn Kutch, Sam Clem, and I, um, who are ETE conference subcommittee members, were also participants in this Pedagogies of Care learning circle. And so we brought this idea before the subcommittee as we were discussing themes. We thought that this would be a great way for instructors to discuss ways they learn to care more for students and for themselves during the past year, and to share how they are continuing to incorporate pedagogies of care moving forward as our classrooms get closer and closer to normal. We hope that as you participate in this conference, you will recognize opportunities to be more caring to the members of the teaching community and to your students moving forward. Through community research and mentorship, we can develop spaces for students and instructors that invite learning in kind and caring ways. Thank you again for being here. It warms my teacher heart to see so many educators who care about teaching and who recognize that teaching requires constant self-reflection and revision. I know that by engaging with this conference, you will come away with teaching ideas that you feel empowered to implement in your own classrooms. As you grow in your teaching, you will be able to contribute to our community of, of teachers in meaningful and valuable ways. So thank you for being here and I'll see you all in the conference. Um, I would now like to introduce Robert Wagner, the Vice President of Academic and Instructional Services for some remarks. Thank you, Cree. Uh, it's really my uh, pleasure to join um, you all uh, this morning virtually. I would like to thank M M M Marilyn too for that wonderful uh, and very important and meaningful introduction uh, uh, for this virtual conference. I'd also like to take thank John Louvier for his leadership and for kicking things off. And I know that unexpectedly, Travis Thurston was not able to join us this morning. I do want to recognize him uh, for his leadership with the Empowering Teaching Excellence Office. Uh, the uh, vision that he and his team have, uh, as well as the support uh, 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 with all things that are faculty-led and faculty-driven related to Empowering Teaching Excellence. So thank you all uh, uh, very much. And to you all who are joining, welcome. Uh, so glad that you uh, have taken uh, the time uh, to join this virtual conference. Once again, we're not meeting in person. This is the second year in a, a row uh, that we have held this conference virtually. That being said, this is also the second year when our numbers have been just so, so so exceedingly good, just outstanding, and, and, and how wonderful it truly is to see the interest and commitment and focus of um, USU faculty uh, to focus on teaching and focus on uh, excellence. And just want to thank you all for taking the time again out of your schedules. We know you have a lot going on this uh, week with college retreats tomorrow and department retreats and campus uh, events uh, this week as well as next week, all leading up to the start of uh, uh, fall uh, semester. So once again, thank you for taking the time. I have 
been contemplating and thinking about some words that I would share uh, just briefly with you this morning. It has been several years uh, since a few of us here uh, uh, came together and talked about and discussed and kind of envisioned a faculty development and a faculty support program that would focus on teaching excellence. And as we talked about it and as we planned and as we put stuff up on whiteboards and came up with all sorts of ideas of ways that we really wanted to support faculty and ways that we wanted to really accentuate the already strong tradition of teaching excellence here at Utah State University. One word kept coming up in our meetings and in our discussions, uh, in addition to things like teaching excellence. Um, the word that kept coming up was empowerment. And uh, the idea of how can we help faculty to feel and to be empowered uh, to teach uh, effectively, efficiently, teaching with excellence uh, in their classrooms, in your labs, in your studios, uh, in your field work, uh, virtually, in person. Uh, how can we empower? That was the word that kept coming to a mind. And so uh, because of that, as we began to develop the program and lay out what it is that we would like to do for faculty at Utah State, we felt strongly that we needed to keep that word, that that, that word needed to be front and center. Uh, and, and so with empowering teaching excellence, that's why it's there. I want to focus on that word because this last year, specifically the last 18 months with COVID and all that uh, has been required of you faculty and our graduate instructors and all of those that teach as part of this great institution, you have been asked to do new things, different things, modify things. Uh, there's been disappointments, there's been challenges, there's been frustrations, there's been excitement, there's been grat, there's been gratification, there's uh, been uh, gratitude, there's all sorts of things you have experienced related to teaching um, over the last 18 months. That being said, I cannot think of a time when empowering you is more important. Empowering you in your classroom, in your labs, in your field work, in your virtual teaching and learning setting, empowering you with the tools that you need to teach with excellence, to teach in a way that your students learn and benefit and, and grow. That's what the Empowering Teaching Excellence Program is all about. And I would like to think that because we've had such dedicated faculty at Utah State University and so many faculty that have been part of this program, that one of the reasons why I believe we've succeeded as an institution and that we've continued to serve students and to serve them very, very well is because you have been empowered you have the tools, you have on your teaching to tool belt all the things that you need to be successful, no matter what the setting, uh, even if your class ends up being different in the middle of the semester than how you started the semester. And we all know that that has happened. But you have truly been empowered to do that yourself. Now, we're here to support you, and we have many resources available to support, and we will continue to do that. But how grateful I, I am, and I just want to point out and recognize you all for the empowerment that you showed this last year in being flexible, in being adaptive, in being able to take these teaching and learning tools that you've learned and that you're learning now and that you'll learn to a day, and you'll take them into your classrooms, into your labs, into your field work, into your virtual classrooms, and then you'll adapt them if they change, if those contexts or if the situations change, you'll adapt and change with it. That is true empowerment. And so thank you for being here to continue to be empowered, to continue to learn, 
and, and grow so that we can serve our students well and we can truly see them succeed as we all succeed in our professions. Uh, so once again, welcome to the conference. Thank you all for uh, being here. It's our pleasure to support you and we will continue to do so. And I wish you all well for the start of fall 21 semester. And I believe I'm going to turn it now to Shelly, instructional coordinator in our Office of Empowering Teaching Excellence. Shelly. Thanks, Robert. And thank you, Cree and Marilyn and John for stepping in today as well. It's hard to go after all of you guys to tell you the truth. Low woman on the totem pole. However, I feel like I have the, the best job of the welcoming today. And that is I get to have the privilege of announcing the 2021 certificate earners we have for this year. And we have a lot. So I'm going to let this show play behind me as I talk about what these people had to do to earn this. So from 2019 to 2020, we had 15 earners overall that earned the certificates for the ET10 um, Empowering Teaching. This year, one of the hardest years in higher education that we've seen in a long time, we had 21 certificate earners earning a total of 28 certificates, meaning not only did some instructors put on their goals that they were gonna earn these certificates this year, but they went above and beyond and earned more than one. For the first time this year, we had five graduate instructors earn our Explore College Teaching Certificate, one focused just for our graduate students, something accomplishable that they can do around their research. We had 18 instructors earn the Teaching Scholar Certificate, and we had another eight earn the master teaching certificate. And what this is, is not just going to events and listening to what people are saying to us. The ET 10 Empowering Teaching Excellence Badging Program that we have in place is set up to help our instructors reach the professional goals that they set out for themselves. So yes, they engage in professional development. They go to learning circles and make contacts with their peers. They come to the conference, they go to seminars. They go all above and beyond so that they can learn for the betterment of their students. But that next step, that really important step is they start changing the way they're teaching to suit their teaching statements, to, to, to suit their teaching philosophies and move forward to be the best educators we can. Because one of the major pillars we have here at Utah State is teaching excellence. We want our students to succeed even in the worst times in higher education. What we saw over the last year is instructors stepping up when they were told that they just have to survive in higher education, Utah State instructors stepped up and said, we want to do more than survive. We want to exceed expectations. And we want to do that for our instructors. So what they did is they implemented strategies from flipped classrooms in an online setting, increased communication, learning how to new, use all new technologies within a matter of weeks. And they did an excellent job of doing that. Other things that they did, for our master teachers, those eight instructors, we focus on contributing and giving back. So out of the hundred things that they had to do in a given week, those instructors stepped up and contributed back to teaching and learning community because it wasn't enough for them to take what they needed. They knew that they had to give back to our community and outside of that. So today we want to sit here and highlight all of these instructors who went the extra mile to do what they needed to do for student success at the university. And while these instructors took the time to do this for the benefit of their students, I really feel proud that they're on their scholarships, it says year 2020-21. I think that that's something that they can really be proud of. So with that, we're gonna move on for the day. And concurrent session A is gonna start at 9.15. We have some amazing sessions. Again, all the sessions today can be found in the events tabs in Mighty Networks. You don't have to RSVP to the event. You just have to click on that Zoom link. If you need have any issues, please contact the Empowered Teaching Excellence email address because that's where you'll get your quickest response. And I hope everyone has a great day at the conference. I'll see you in a little bit.